into the vehicle? Yes, I could. How many people could you see inside of the vehicle? I saw one person. Where was that person in the vehicle? That person was uh, the driver's seat of the vehicle. Did you get a good look at the driver? Yes, I did. Did you see the driver in the courtroom today? Yes, I do. Your Honor, I'd ask Mr. Brooks, please remove his mask for a moment. Thank you for doing that, Mr. Brooks. His mask is off. Can you identify the driver in the courtroom if you see him? Yes, the driver is seated at the defense wearing a blue tie and blue shirt underneath his suit jacket. Does the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant? The record will reflect the witness has identified the defendant as the driver of the <coughs> vehicle he saw on November 21. Well, I have your honor. Thank you. All right. Any questions for this witness, sir? I do. Um, you stated uh, initially that you had heard uh, some radio calls about a, a possible uh, altercation at Frank Park. That is correct. Uh, do you recall <coughs> what the initial report of that was? My recollection of that was that there was a call for service. It was either a domestic or some sort of physical altercation along the riverfront in Frame Park and that uh, there was a male with a uh, armed with a knife and that he was fleeing from the area. So it was reported it was a possible knife involved and there was a male <laughs> running from the scene? That's correct. And were you ever given any uh, further information about the male with the knife that was running from the scene? No. Any information that the male with a knife running from the scene was in a vehicle at any time? No. Do you know if any investigation was done uh, looking into that supposed fight at the park? I love how much emphasis he's placing on the male with the knife, quote unquote, quote unquote, quote unquote. Um, the reason he's doing that is because it's like, if he, he, in his mind, what is the most important is disproving the initial domestic incident with Erica Patterson. He wants to shed light on all of these details, I guess, about how fake and not real that was and how Erica was just, again, like getting him strung up because she was unhappy with him, I guess. Quote, I, don't, I don't know. He, there was no knife. Nobody had a knife. I think Nicholas Kirby said that he might have said during his 911 call that the person is hacking Erica might have had a knife just to get the police to come faster. And honestly, who cares? I, he was physically attacking Erica Patterson. So I think that Nicholas Kirby, by saying that this person who was attacking Erica had a knife, getting them to come there faster, I don't blame him at all. Daryl Brooks, the fact that you did or did not have a knife right before you used your house car to kill six people and then injure so many others, nobody cares. You could have had 10 knives at the instant when the 911 call went out. Nobody cares. You ran through a Christmas parade. <clears throat> yes. And what did you learn? I did not learn anything of it. I just know that squads were responding there to investigate it. I was not updated on their findings or what they had investigated. I just know that they were dispatched there for that investigation. Do you recall if there was ever a knife recovered or uh, a suspect recovered in that supposed incident? Do you mean like <laughs> how much later do I know? Like what I know at, now? At any time, at any time, do you know if, if there was a, a suspect, I guess I would say apprehended or anything that was found with a knife? To your knowledge? To my knowledge, I do not know if the suspect from that incident, which was you. Uh <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> officer Bryce, the emphasis that you just placed on you. I'd love to see it. Let's see a little bit more of that. I think we will. Let's see. I was located with a knife. You, what do you mean? You, Daryl Brooks. Mean? I know you were the suspect in that incident, and I know you were um, taken into custody approximately 30 to 40 minutes later. I do not know if you were armed when you were taken into custody. I'll let the record uh, reflect that I do not identify by that name, nor do I know any individual by that name. I'm here in third party. The record's and noted, although the jury will disregard the comments, they are not saying, evidence in this case. Next question, please. At the time, you said, did you respond to that incident at the park? 
No. So how can you know who was involved with it if you didn't respond yourself? Because you stated at any time this investigation took a long time to complete. And from this investigation, we determined that you were the suspect in that investigation. You determined that? I did not, no. Okay. So basically, you just going off what you were told because you just stated that you didn't make any determination, nor did you investigate it. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. You also gave, uh, and when you were asked the question of um, were there any other officers along the route, or I don't know if that was referring to side exits or anything of that nature, but I recall you stating that you, you gave an estimate, stating that you, you weren't sure where other officers were stationed, but you gave an approximate ex estimate. Would that be fair to say? That is correct. And would that have been officers stationed at different cross streets? That is correct. Do you know if those cross streets were barricaded? I know that there were barricades across numerous intersections for the parade route. That's how we uh, shut down traffic in the downtown area for parades. So pretty much every side street is barricaded? I can't give you specifics on what uh, streets were barricaded, but yes, the vast majority of streets are barricaded to stop traffic for the parade route. Can you pull up Exhibit 1 and publish? Those statements, please do that. Thank you. Um, can you see, well, I know you can. Can you see the, the red lines on this map that we're looking at? Yes. And what do those red lines constitute? Barricades. So would it be fair to say that there's a red line at every cross street that we can see on this map? That would be you mean start, along the parade route? Start the along, the, along the parade route, starting at East Main Street, there's a red mark. Oh, I didn't mean to put that uh, arrow. Can we clear that? I was trying to put like a little dot. <coughs> starting there, there's a red line there. There's two at Buckley. Hold on, just so the record is clear, he put a mark at the near the intersection of East Main and White Rock Avenue. So from that location to where? There's two at Buckley. Well, hold on, you're a testifying now. You gotta ask a question. So the juror will disregard that. Are there statement. are there two at Buckley? Yes. Is there one at Martin Street? Yes. Is there one at is is, is there two at Barstow Street? Yes. One at Gaspar. Yes. One at North Grand and one at West Broadway. There's two at West Broadway. Well, this is one is on the closer to where it says North Grand, and one is on the other side of the star right there. This is what I'm referring to. Okay. Yes, there are two right there. That? Please clear that now. So there, there's two there. There's two at Clinton Street. Can you see those two? Yes. There's one at Maple Avenue. Can you see that one? Yes. And there's one at right here at West Avenue. Can you see that? Correct, yes. So it would be fair to say that there's pretty much barriers at every single street from White Rock and East Main to West Main and West, North West Avenue? Yes. Barricades at all those streets? Yes. Do you know if there were officers stationed at those barricades? Yes, this map shows, it appears uh, where everyone was uh, for their assignments that day. So would it be fair to say if someone wanted to exit the parade route, they would essentially be blocked in by the officers and barricades? No. There are barricades at these streets. We can see, would that be fair to say? No. So it's not fair to say that there's barricades at these streets? It's fair to say that there's barricades at the streets. So essentially if someone was leaving the parade route, can they just go right through the barricades? Based on the previous videos that we just were shown. Not, not based on the previous videos. If someone was leaving the parade route, can they just go down these streets that are barricaded? Can they just drive right out of there? Yes, the video how show when, that. How when it's barricaded? As the video we sh were shown we're earlier, the, the vehicle we're went right through the barricade. Well, when you ask the question, you have to let him answer that he's giving the reason. You asked him how. He's explaining it. There's plenty of ways to get off the parade route. You, you can stop um, after. Pausing it there. Enough said, you could stop. Daryl Brooks could have stopped what he was doing at any point through his long drive through the parade route. He could have just stopped and he didn't. And that's what makes him a murderer. He made the executive decision that him getting through this area was more important than lives of anybody and in the path before him. And that's why he's on trial, that's why he got convicted, and that's why he got sentenced to a thousand plus years.
You're being given lawful orders by officers and they could have directed you off the parade route in a safe manner. You could have stopped the vehicle at any point or you could have driven through plastic barricades like you did at Northwest Avenue where I was located. And so yes, you, you can drive through the plastic who? barricades. The you, you refer to as who? Daryl Brooks, you, the person that's talking. The you, and how did you come to the conclusion of that name as you stated that you couldn't see past this building here, which you just, which you <clears throat> said is the Wisconsin house, would that be fair to say? Well, that's a compound question, so I, you need to rephrase that, sir. You say, clear, <laughs> clear this right there. Please, is that a please? Clear, can you clear this uh, circle and arrow right here that's... Thank you, Madam Clerk. You stated that... It's so small. This is such a small transgression compared to all of Daryl Brooks's, but the way that he refuses to be nice to the court clerk is a subtle, long-term aggravation that I encounter with him. From where you were positioned at, you couldn't see around that building. Did you, did you say that? Yes, I did. So it would be fair to say you also couldn't see what was happening along the parade route on Main Street. Would that be fair to say? That is correct. So it would be also fair to say that everything that you knew up until that point came over the radio and you didn't have firsthand knowledge. That is correct. You also stated that after a few minutes of hearing these, I guess, radio reports, you said after a few minutes, you noticed something was going on. Do you recall from the reports how long this vehicle traveled along the parade route? An estimate, estimate of the time that it, it traveled down the parade route? I do not know how long uh, the vehicle was on the parade route for. If I had to estimate, I would estimate approximately one to two and a half minutes, two <coughs> minutes maybe. Would you, would you say it's fair to say that that's relatively a short amount of time? I would agree with that. So what do you mean by after a few minutes, you know that something is going on? <laughs> he just said one to two minutes. After a few minutes, I would classify that as two minutes. He's, this is not an issue. And he knows it. This officer knows it. Everybody needs to move on. <laughs> because after a few minutes, what I meant by that was the initial call for service at the boat launch um, or for that domestic fight in frame park from that time frame from when squads were responding to there to the time that um, I had shots fired that is what I mean by a few minutes so you have to take into account the the time for squads responding to that call I, I don't know uh, police protocol so just asking Mr. Brooks please ask your next question I'm, I'm getting to no, right but I have to advise the jury to disregard that comment because it's not testimony. And you stated that, well, let's, let's go to... Uh, you don't need, you need that, we're going to turn it off. Yeah, you can, you can take that down. Sorry about that. All right, thank you. Uh, I believe it's Exhibit 57. Can we bring it to about 16 or 17 seconds? Can you bring it back a little bit? Uh, one, more, one more second. There, can you pause it there? Would it be fair to say that those are barricades that are laying in the street there? Correct. Any idea why they were not standing up? Yes, I do. What would be the reason? It was very windy that day, so when they were standing up uh, how they normally are, they kept on blowing across the street. So we tilted them on their sides so they wouldn't get blown across the road, and they would still stay up there and block traffic. They would be able to block traffic by laying down? Yes, they serve the same purpose. But they would be able to block traffic? by laying down. I guess I don't understand what your question is here. Would, would it be much more easier to see them if they were facing upright than laying down? I think the... Daryl Brooks asking like the question here is, I didn't see this particular set of barricades that you guys had moved towards the ground. So therefore, because I didn't see this set, it's almost like I was justified in driving through the entire parade route. It's fine. It's, it's really fine because he will be in jail for the rest of his natural life and unnatural life and if he truly is a demon. But I'm still so... This line of questioning is so evil, but it's fine. It's fine. It's probably quite minuscule because as you see, the legs that are now up in the air are approximately the same height as what the bar would be if they were standing the 
standing up how they normally are. And you come to that conclusion, conclusion how? Based on my training experience after deploying barricades on numerous events and working several parades in my work history. So you would estimate that a barricade facing upright and a barricade laying down would be the same height? Approximately. Can you bring it back to 10, 10 seconds? From what we're looking at right now, it's a little hard to see. You can see the vehicle, you can see where you identified you, you were but it's a little bit hard to see everything. Would that be fair to say? Because of the the person with the black coat and the gray hoodie and Nike black pants is directly in the middle of the screen? That's, that's fair correct. to say it's a little hard to see from this. Where it is paused now, yes. Yes, where, that's what I meant, where, where it's paused now. Yes. It looks like you're, this would be you right here. Would that be fair to say? <coughs> that is correct. It looks like you're firing your weapon right there. Would that be fair to say? I do not know if I have uh, pulled the trigger yet or not. I don't believe I have. I you were ready, ready to fire at that point. That's correct. Do you recall what you were aiming for? Yes, I do. You stay for the record and for the jury? You, Daryl Brooks. Again, you make reference to the you and the name. How did you come to that? Being, seeing as how you just testified to that couldn't see anything before uh, what you call the Wisconsin House. Would that be fair to say that you testified to that? That's correct. And you also stated that you learned additional information later on. Would that be fair to say? Mm -hmm. That's correct. So how could you determine at this time right now where we're looking at that you knew the suspect's name and the driver? Because you keep referring to you and then you're saying the name. How did you, how did you have that information at this point that, that's paused right here that we're looking at? I didn't say at that time I knew your name. You referred to the name, did you not? That is correct. It's so petty, but I hate when he says, you referred to the name. The name, your name, Daryl Brooks, because you were the one who did this shit. Okay. So how were you able to obtain the information about a name? I did not know your name at the time I shot at you. Who's the you you were referring to? Daryl Brooks. Again, you say a name that you haven't answered how you came to that information. Were you told this? Yes. By whom? I do not know who told me. Ultimately, I just know that throughout the course of the investigation, you, your name, you were arrested within 30 or 40 minutes, and you were identified as Daryl Brooks, who was the <laughs> suspect in this incident. So you either had to hear that name from either a report that you heard or someone told you. How did you come to the conclusion of the name? I'm assuming someone at the police department told me your name. And you don't recall who that was? No. Even though you can cite the name so clearly and identify it and keep stressing it and stressing it, you don't recall. He's not, he's not stressing it. He's absolutely not stressing, quote unquote, the name. He's simply saying the name of the individual who is identified as the driver of the red Ford SUV that went through the Waukesha Christmas Parade in 2021. It's the fact that he's acting like it's a big issue that somebody later identified Daryl Brooks by name to the officer that he's questioning right now is laughable. Daryl Brooks knows that this is a BS line of questioning, but he's going with it anyway because he wants to pick a bone with this guy. Or oh, how do you like the information of the name? That is correct. So is it fair to say that you're just using the name based off what you're told and not what you were aware of? What are you asking me? Is it fair to <laughs> say that you're identifying this name based off of what you told and not what you knew? Oh, I'm saying the name based on the fact that you are now, you were arrested for this incident. You were identified during this incident. And because of that investigation, that is how we know your name. Would it be fair to say, and obviously you said you've been uh, in law enforcement for seven and a half years, correct? Correct. I'm sure you've done a lot of investigations in that seven and a half years. Is that fair to say? Correct. So you do understand that during an, a police investigation, any suspect is innocent until proven guilty. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. And so with that knowledge, why are you so eminent about the name of the suspect that you just testified to not being aware of at the time? That you testified to, in fact, being told? I'm sorry, I'm confused by your question. Can you say it again? I think it was clear, but I'll say it again. Thank you. Well, I'll say it this way. You testified to not 
being aware of the suspect's name at the time. Correct. You also you also testified to being told of the name, correct? Correct. I don't I don't know how I came about your name. I would assume it was through the investigation at the police department. And were you in fact part of that investigation? No, I was not. So it would be fair to say that by you using a name, you would not be sure. How can you be sure? I'll object. Um, Ground. Argument. It's been asked. It's been answered. <laughs> it's argumentative. The objection is sustained. Please ask your next question. When asked about uh, what you were aiming at when you fired, you didn't give a definitive answer. You were aiming for the driver? I felt like I gave a pretty definitive answer. <laughs> My answer was you. He's being petty. He's being as petty as Daryl Brooks is being, and I love that so much. Yes, King. Yes, King. Yes. Daryl Brooks. Aiming for the driver. Yes. It's pretty definitive. I identified the person so who was shooting at. What, what part of the driver's body could you see when the vehicle passed you? When the vehicle was approaching me, I could see the silhouette of his uh, face and upper portion of his body. Can you describe what you mean by silhouette? The upper portion of a person's body, I would say, from maybe chest, shoulders, and head and face. You said silhouette, though. What, what is a silhouette? The what Daryl Brooks is really asking here is, can you describe what um, the definition of silhouette is for um, the jury? It's for the jury. Outer portions of what would be like your shoulder down your arms to your chest. The silhouette would be the outer portion of it. That would be the upper half, not the silhouette. What do you mean by silhouette? Uh, object, the objection is sustained. It's Mr. Brooks is not asking a question. It was argumentative. Um, the jury what, can certainly decide what that means, but he's it, answered the question. Would it be fair to say that that would be equivalent to a profile? What do you mean by a profile? A profile would be sort of like a, like a side angle view. Would it be fair to say that a silhouette would be more of an outline that would be kind of similar to a profile? I don't know exactly what you're asking here, but I can tell you when the vehicle was driving towards me, I could see your face. And as the vehicle drove to my right, yes, then I saw the side of your face. And so then, yes, as a vehicle passes you, you see different portions of the driver, I guess you could. Now that we've thoroughly explained the physics of what it's like when somebody passes you as somebody on the street in a car, can we move on, Daryl Brooks, now that you've covered the physics of the entire event? So, and so you aim towards what you can see? Correct. So that would be the upper part, as you say, the you said the show you made a, I think it was your left hand pointing to your right shoulder, a uh, shoulder and up silhouette, as you said. That is what I could see when you were driving at me. You asked me what I could see of you, and that is what I could see of you in the vehicle when you were approaching me. The question now, though, is is that what you aimed for? I was aiming at you. Yes. <laughs> at what you can see. I was aiming at you in the driver's seat. Yes. Shoulder, as you pointed to, and up, correct? Would that be fair to say? Yes. Firing a weapon of your caliber, would any of those shots be kill shots? Yes. Would it be fair to say that firing a kill go. shot at anyone would terrify him? I'm sure being shot at is terrifying. Yes. Is he? I'm sorry. Is he honestly trying to make a point out of you, after I had already driven through, driven over some people in this parade, you fired your gun at me and that scared me. So therefore, I was forced to drive through essentially all of the parade. Honestly, you're responsible for me driving through the people back there. <laughs> that feels like his argument right now and... I'm laughing because it's so clownish, but it's evil. This is evil. We're witnessing an evil person speaking right now. It is. So it'd be fair to say you were shooting the kid. No. So would it be fair to say that judging based on what you see that you testified to, a silhouette <coughs> from about here that you pointed to, from the shoulder, using your left hand, you pointed at your right shoulder from here 
Uh, and you just acknowledged that any one of those three shots could have been kill shots. Would it be fair to say that you were aiming to kill? Shooting to kill, rather. Not aiming to kill, but shooting to kill. No. So, <laughs> what do you think you would have hit if you just testified to saying that you aimed at the driver? What were you estimating to hit? Well, my intention was to shoot you in the upper <laughs> portion of the body. However, my intention was not to kill you. My intention was to stop the threat, the threat that you were posing to everyone in the downtown area at the Christmas parade. Keep referring to the you again. We'll, we'll, that's not a question. So, By your estimation, it Judge Doro should have said, I instructing the jury to disregard that specific remark. I'm sorry, but he, that was commentary again, and she let it slide. Acknowledging that those were kill shots, if you connected with any of those shots, is it possible the driver could have been killed? Yes. And would it be fair to say that that's deadly force? Yes. Do you think it would have been possible to aim at the tire of the vehicle? No. Why not? Would, would, the, would shooting the tire of the vehicle not stop the vehicle? No, it would not have. So a blown tire would, to your estimation, a blown tire would not stop a vehicle from moving? No, it will not. So it will just, just keep on? It won't even slow down? That is correct. I'm trained to stop the threat. You were the threat. The vehicle was not the threat. The vehicle was the weapon in which yes. you used. So that is yes, why I officer. Yes. Yes. Pretty clear. Um, could you have, well, you, you testify that you're trained to stop the threat. And so would it be fair to say that that training constitutes shooting kill shots? Well, we are trained in deadly force and when we are presented with a deadly force incident yes we have to sometimes make that difficult decision and use deadly force have you ever used deadly force before that incident objection ground sustain you said you're trained to use deadly force so would it be fair to say that anytime you shoot your weapon it would be deadly force when it is directed at a person yes were you injured in any way during the incident no i was not and at the time, being where you were posi positioned at, you've already testified that you could not see what was going on during the parade route from your <coughs> position. Why did you feel the need at the time, not knowing the full extent of what was happening, to use deadly force? Sorry, I just have to jump in right here, but I need to address the entire conversation that just happened prior to this. Daryl Brooks is acting like somebody who's already run through a portion of a... Christmas parade route is not a worthy subject to use deadly force upon. I feel like that is a perfect usage of your firearm as a police officer. I have no issues with his behavior at this moment in time. Daryl Brooks was a murdering loose cannon and this officer tried to stop him and Daryl Brooks is trying to pick issue with that. I feel like he's trying to bring the issue of pro police brutality to the forefront here. But that's not what's going on. You, <laughs> obviously, obviously Daryl Brooks had already gone through the Christmas parade. He had already done some damage. He had already run some people over. So that really, and he was continuing down the route. So how does that even enter into the equation? Daryl Brooks is a manipulator who is trying to use a hot button issue that does have legitimate roots, absolutely, in order to manipulate the jury, in order to manipulate everybody around him into believing that that's really what's at play here instead of the fact that Officer Bryce was trying to stop the person who was running through a Christmas parade. Because as I previously stated, based on the fact that the radio traffic for people screaming for ambulances and as uh, different officers were getting on the radio and it was progressively moving further and further westbound towards me on the parade route um, that and then officers saying someone was hit which I initially thought was a physical altercation someone being hit but it was a vehicle versus person hit um, based on that the vehicle speed at which yes I could not see it uh, down Main Street I only had a couple seconds at most until uh, the vehicle from where I saw it was to my location. So based on the amount of vehicle damage, I knew uh, the vehicle had been striking pedestrians in the roadway. And because of that, um, that's a deadly force incident. So that is why I deployed deadly force. So you said you knew, you knew what the vehicle had, and you knew, you 
keep you said it multiple times, you knew. Yes. How could you know if you could not see around the position that you were were positioned? Sorry, Daryl Brooks. I'm gonna give you an example by like every prosecution team that's ever delivered an opening statement. Evidence that something happened. Like if somebody comes inside and they're drenched in water and they say it was raining outside when I came inside, you can understand that it was raining. This officer is testifying to the fact that he heard over the radio that there was a vehicle with like, speeding down the parade route, a vehicle that had already connected with a person, and then he sees a vehicle come down the parade route where he is that has significant damage to it. Damage that would equate to it already interacting with pedestrians. It's not a hard leap to imagine how he arrived at the conclusion that your vehicle was indeed the one that was harming civilians as it drove down the parade route. How do you know that? Because based on the speed of a vehicle on a closed roadway during a parade and no and people running out of the way so they'd not get run over right in front of me, between all of those things, I knew what had just happened and that is why I had to take action. And you knew based on the radio reports? I was yes. Everything that I had just previously described. All yes. That encompassing, yes. That yes. My decision making into yes. Now I knew what had happened. I did not know previous to that what was going on. I did not know there was a vehicle on the roadway until I saw it, and it all made sense and when I put everything together. When mm -hmm. you saw it, by the time you saw it, as you said, it was a couple of seconds. So at that point, did you observe the vehicle strike anyone from the time that you saw it? No, I did not. I was focused on the vehicle, so I just remember that there were. Daryl Brooks is really insinuating right here that this officer should not have made an educated guess that he was indeed the person who was driving murderously down the parade route, which he was. Vile. Little kids and adults, uh, adults on the sidewalks. I knew there were a lot of children right in the roadway right there. And I remember seeing people like running, but I wasn't really paying attention to the people. I was just focused on the vehicle. Um, so it was really all I was focused on at that point. You weren't paying attention to any other people? That was not my primary focus. But you do recall that no one was struck from the time you saw the vehicle? Yes, after looking back, after videos later on throughout the investigation. No, 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 from what you saw, from what you observed with your own eyes. No, I can't recall ever seeing someone hit right in front of me, no. I do not recall that. Does the exhibit videos that you saw here today, does anyone get struck in those vi uh, videos that you saw today? No, not that I saw today. And you still made the decision to shoot to kill? That's correct. Actually, <laughs> I shot to stop the threat. If ultimately you would have been killed from that, that is a possible outcome. But you did testify that there were kill shots. Did you not? Sustained also been asked and answered in multiple ways. Do you point. recall what your Daryl Brooks is so offended that a police officer monitoring the parade would have wanted to kill somebody who was driving through the parade and killing participants and parade watchers. For some reason, he's deeply offended that a police officer would, would have wanted to stop the person who was killing other people. Insanity. This is insanity, and we all know it. We all know it, but he still he still had to get up here and fight and make an argument and be difficult because that is who he is at the core of his person. Re just revolting. Shots hit, if anything? Uh, yes, later on uh, throughout the investigation when I no, gave No, at my... the time, at the time. Not, not later on, at the time where you fired the shots. Mr. Brooks, you asked a question. He was attempting to answer it, so you have to let. I was trying to give him <clears throat> clarification. Of what but I you, mean. but you have to let him answer the question that you asked, and if you feel the need for follow up, then you can do that or ask a very specific question. But he's gonna, he, I'm allowing him to answer. Um, he was interrupted. Go ahead. Um, 
I believe it was three days after the incident, that is when I gave my voluntary statement to Detective uh, Kirby and Detective Casey, and upon completion of that statement, I asked them if uh, they could share any information with me, and during that conversation, I was shown a picture of the vehicle and where my round struck the vehicle. You stated you asked them for any additional information that they could give you. So it would be fair to say at that time you, you still didn't have a lot of information. <coughs> would it be fair to say that? That is correct. I didn't know where my rounds had struck previous to that. Did you ask them in the in the statement that you just testified to saying you asked them if they can provide you with any more information? Did you at any time specifically ask about the shots that you fired when you requested if they could give you any more information? I do not remember the specifics of the question <laughs> I asked uh, in pertaining to what information they could share with me. I think it was sort of a generalization of what can you share with me at this point. Mm -hmm. So would it be fair to say at that point there's a possibility that you did not know the name of the suspect, nor did you know if you had shot the suspect at that time? At that time, I knew I had not uh, shot the suspect because the night of the incident when he was taken into custody, um, it was relayed to me that uh, he was uninjured and he had not been struck by any of my rounds that were fired. I'm gonna be honest, given what Daryl Brooks did, that notification has to be a little heartbreaking. Like at least a grazing of the arm, if anything, right? Do recall just testifying to requesting more information from the detectives when you have the conversation with them. Is that correct? That is correct. And you said that you don't recall asking them about if your bullet struck someone. Is that correct? That is correct. So the day I met with Detective Kirby and Detective Casey, that was, I believe, two or three days after the incident, Mr. Brooks was taken into custody the night of. So <laughs> he was still at the police department. I knew that he had not been struck. So. I think we're dealing with the questions I asked of the detectives. The, that was not the same night of the incident. I'm sure you asked, uh, you, didn't, you didn't say it, but you said you don't recall the information that you requested. Would that be fair to say? No, I don't recall specifically what questions I asked that they, I don't know specifically what questions I asked of them a year ago. I just, I know <laughs> it was a generalized, what information can you share with me at this point? Because I didn't know what was going on in the investigation or what leads they had essentially what had happened after my involvement, I guess. So you didn't, it's, it would be fair to say there was a lot of information that you still were unsure about at that point. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. So if there was information that you're acknowledging that you had no knowledge of, which would be essentially the reason why you would ask if they can volunteer more information to you. Yeah. Then how, would there be, how would there be any way of knowing if you struck the suspect? Objection. Grounds. <laughs> I also think it mischaracterizes the testimony. And mm -hmm. you said you had, you made a statement during your testimony that you had learned that the suspect was not injured. Do you recall who you learned that information from? I believe um, when I was back at the police department after the incident, so after using deadly force, you're ultimately removed from the scene. Um, when I was at the police department, I was with a support officer and another detective. And at that point, um, I was still answering questions for investigating officers for what I saw, what I knew, what I saw in the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And I believe Detective Stern um, was at our substation with uh, Daryl Brooks after taking him into custody. And I was shown um, a photo. Even, uh, he's so strong in almost every single other part of his testimony, but even here he falls into the trap of saying Daryl Brooks instead of taking you into, into custody. And I understand why. I mean, he's been pushing the issue so hard, but I just wish that he had remained steadfast in the you situation for the entirety of the cross-examination because it makes Daryl so mad. 
at that point and um, I know I had asked if he sustained any injuries or if anyone else had sustained any injuries um, from my use of force and at that point I was not told that anyone had been struck by my gunfire. So you just said you asked if the suspect or if anyone else mm -hmm. was struck by the gunfire. That's correct. So you weren't sure at that point? You weren't no, sure? I was I was not certain at that point. It was I can't describe it any more than it was just pure chaos. And at that point I did not know if anyone else was injured for my rounds or um, up until I was confirmed that you were not injured at that point, no. I did not know if anyone was hurt until I was told that. So would it be fair to say that, as you just stated, you were unsure if the suspect or anyone else was injured? Would it be fair to say that there was a possibility because you did not know for certain? Objection. Grounds? Sustain. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor? Asked and answered. Next question. After the vehicle passed you, did you observe it strike anyone? I did not I did not observe it strike anyone after it passed me. Do you recall who you, well I think you did, I, I think you said you um, gave your report to Officer Kirby, is that, is that correct? Detective Kirby, yes. I'm sorry, Detective. Do you recall <coughs> telling Detective Kirby that you were unaware of a vehicle on the parade route and you were unaware of people being injured? Yes, I previously stated that. Were you able to make out a license plate when it, from the vehicle when it passed you? Uh, I later learned uh, that I must have, um, but I do not recall that. So from what you recall at the time that the vehicle was passing, you don't recall getting the license plate? At this time, I do not recall the license plate, but after I shot at the vehicle, I then responded up Main Street and started triaging victims. And after doing that, um, I met with officers and I, because I couldn't get on the radio, and uh, give out as much information as I wanted to. So when I spoke with other officers, that's when I explained to them that I was the one that had shot. It was not a suspect shooting, it was me. And that uh, the vehicle in question was a Red Ford Escape. And I believe I was talking to Detective Casey, uh, Specialist Moss, and I believe there might have been another officer there as well. And I must have provided a license plate to Detective Casey uh, during that debrief on scene. I did not know about that until about two days later when I gave my statement to Detective Kirby and <coughs> Detective Casey, uh, because that is when I was informed by Detective Casey that I had actually provided him a correct license plate, but I don't remember. I feel like that just goes to show that the trauma that this officer was experiencing during the point in time when he offered this offer, this information rather, was so significant that his own body and mind blocked out the fact that he had provided a license plate. Any reason why you didn't mention the license plate in your report? Because like I stated, I don't remember it. So it would be fair to say if you don't remember it, then it's a possibility that you didn't get the license plate now. I would say that if Detective Casey is telling me that I told him on scene during a traumatic incident that I provided him the license plate of the vehicle, I'd have to believe that Detective Casey is correct. There's many things that I, you do not remember during a traumatic incident. I believe that's because your brain prevents you from remembering everything. He's exactly correct. This is what I'm talking about. When you go through something that is extraordinarily traumatic, there are specific details that you will forget because your brain is the most focused on the task at hand, which is either trying to survive or trying to help people. And I think that this officer was trained on trying to help people. So yeah, he doesn't remember exactly what he told Detective Casey, but does that mean he didn't tell that to Detective Casey? No. So you would describe it as a traumatic incident that you do recall using deadly force and recalling what you was aim aiming for, but not the license plates or anything else like that. That is correct. Would it be fair to say that because you describe it as a traumatic event, that there was a lot of things that you probably don't recall about the incident? I would, uh, I would agree with that. I would think that there's a lot of things um, when I became, uh, when I started going up West Main Street and started seeing the absolute destruction, I, I know there's things that I did and saw that I don't really remember and I don't really want to remember. Mm. 
will one of those possibly be the suspect that you keep naming? No. And how did you come to the knowledge of the make and model of the vehicle when on the exhibit that was shown, you only had an interaction with it for a few seconds? How were you able to make out the make and the model of the vehicle? Because that vehicle model has been out for quite some time and I'm halfway decent with vehicles and I readily recognize that it was a Ford Escape. So you've seen many Ford Escapes? Yes. And you said uh, the model has been out for some time, so what do you mean by that? Do you mean it It's 2022 model, now, and that Ford model was approximately 2008-ish to maybe a 2011, 2010-ish, so <laughs> yeah, they've been out for over a decade. And how did you come to that knowledge of the estimate of the years that the model could have been? That, would you agree that that's pretty difficult to know just off the bat? No. Would that be fair to say? No. So you <laughs> tell the model in year of a vehicle just by looking at it? That is correct. So it would be fair to say if someone had a vehicle right here in front of you, you'd be able to tell just by looking at it for a couple of seconds to make the model in the year? Depending on what vehicle it is, yeah, <laughs> quite likely. I'm decent with vehicles. What do you mean by He's like, yeah, if it intersects with the vehicle knowledge that I've obtained as an officer who interacts with the public, interacts with vehicles, then yep, I would probably be able to wager a good guess on what year, make, model it is. <laughs> it's, d d and I want to be straight, Daryl Brooks knows that this is a stupid point to argue, but he's doing it because it is a point to argue. So aggravating. Decent. I can recognize many vehicles that are manufactured. Uh, part of being a police officer is dealing yep. with vehicles. Yep. Um, we run a lot of vehicle registration plates. <laughs> so yep. when you match the registration to a vehicle on a response, you become very well accustomed to the many different vehicles that are manufactured. <laughs> Did you at any time see the registration of the vehicle that passed you? Like I stated previous, I debriefed with Detective Casey during the incident, and he stated that I gave him a registration number, a registration mm -hmm. plate for it. I do not recall giving him that uh, registration plate, but uh, Detective Casey informed me that I provided him a correct license plate for that vehicle. Would it be fair to say that? Would it be fair to say that that automatically links to the the make and model and the year of the car? Yes. Would it be fair to say that that if you rent or if we're judging by the license plates, if you we're conducting a stop, and to do that, you will have to run the license plates. Would it be fair to say that that all that information would come up in your computer when you run the license plate? Would that be fair to say? You had a lot of questions right there. So okay, let me let me back up then. So if you were if you were conducting a traffic stop, okay, and you pulled up the license plates of the vehicle that you were stopping, okay, would the information registered to that vehicle show in your computer? If the license plate is actually accurate and current to that actual vehicle, yes. Just so we're clear, the information would come up though? That is correct. It should, as long as the system is working. And did you have a, a system or any equipment that could have assisted you in learning the make and the model and year of the vehicle at the time of the incident? No, I was on foot with no other equipment. <laughs> so is it fair to say that you did not know that information until later when you were told by Detective Casey or another detective? No, because like I previously stated, I can recognize vehicles pretty well and I knew what approximate, I knew the, it was a Ford Escape and I knew the yep. approximate year of it. You did. What the point that Daryl Brooks is arguing right now is that even as a police officer with seven and a half years of experience in pulling cars over and running registration, running license plates, etc., that this officer would need the program in order to identify the make and model of a vehicle because obviously he never retains any of that information inside of his own head. Testify that and you can also see from the exhibit video that the front end of the vehicle was damaged. Would that be fair to say? That is correct. And you can still make out the make and model and year of the vehicle. He said, 
Daryl Brooks really, he really just said, even though the front of my vehicle was all bent out of shape because I'd been hitting people, you could still identify the make and model of my mom's car. With extensive damage. That is correct. Could you see the emblem of the vehicle at that point? I don't recall if I saw an emblem or not. I know the body style of the vehicle and I knew it was a Ford Escape. Would it be fair to say that many SUVs have the same type of body build? I'm sure some vehicles do look similar. So that, would it be fair to say that there's a possibility that you could not make out the make and model and gear of the vehicle, especially with it being extensively damaged to the front? No, I was confident that it was a Ford Escape. Did you notice any tents on that vehicle? The front windshield that I looked through, I know it was not tinted or it was not tinted enough to um, not make me recognize you. Did you see any <laughs> tints on the side of the vehicle? Not that I recall. And if they were, they weren't that dark. You don't recall, though, for sure, if there were any tints to any windows of the vehicle you saw? Well, all windows are tinted to some extent. It just depends <laughs> on to what uh, percentage of tint that they come with. So. I'm sure there is tint on the on the windows because vehicles come from the factory with some level of window tint. So I guess to your question, was there any window tint? I'm sure there was, but not to a degree that would prevent me from seeing who was driving it. Explain what you mean by uh, tint percentage. So there's different varying degrees of tint that you can put on vehicles. Can you elaborate for the jury? Oh. <laughs> Any, any time Daryl Brooks says for the jury, you know. You know it's because he doesn't understand what a witness just said. I hear, I already hear Zach objecting in my ear. So we'll see how this goes. I hope that Judge Doro sustains it because I don't know how. I mean, uh, is the vehicle tint relevant? The vehicle window tint in the back window is relevant, not really, because Del Brooks was the only person who was identified coming out of that vehicle, which again is a big issue with his line of questioning here. He keeps insinuating that maybe it was a different vehicle. Well, you were recorded coming out of it and the car keys in your pocket were the same ones that locked and unlocked the car. So is this really a big issue that you need to fight him on, Daryl Brooks, or are you just being an ass? I'll overrule the objection. Mr. Brooks, please um, ask your question again. You stated that uh, all cars come from the manufacturer with some level of tint, but you made a reference to percentage. Correct. Can you elaborate on uh, percentage, what, what, what would constitute a darker tint versus a lighter tint? Well, you've asked two questions now, so which one do you want them to answer first? <laughs> the, the last one, I'm sorry. So you're asking you Don't laugh. Don't laugh about it, Daryl Brooks. No one... Mm. Nothing about what you're going through is funny right now, should be funny right now for you. About the 10%, percentage. about the 10%. So like a 50% a tint would be a lighter tint than like a 35% tint. So the, the, the lower the percentage, the darker the tint. That is correct. Okay. You stated that you're pretty decent with uh, making out makes make and model in years of uh, vehicles based on your line of work, would that be fair to say? That is correct. <laughs> Did you know of uh, the make and model of the vehicle that you saw that day? Would you know if those model vehicles come from the manufacturer with any tint? To be honest with you, I don't work for Ford, so I don't know <laughs> if they come um, with tint, but I would assume <laughs> as most vehicles, um, when they come from the factory, they come with some sort of tint, I believe usually the front is approximately 50% tent and the rears are usually, I think, 25 or 30 or something like that. So from your knowledge, the, the backer windows are you usually coming from the manufacturer maybe a little bit darker than the front? Correct. No further questions. <coughs> uh, so the barricade... Let's go, Zach. Let's hear what Zach has to say. Sue Opper, sorry to pause immediately, Sue Opper, did you see the little smile she just hid behind her pen? Zach is about to eat him. Saw so, uh, at the intersection intersection where you were posted. 
Was it been blown over by the wind? Uh, yes. Yeah, so when I deployed the barricades initially, um, standing upright, they kept on blowing directly, like right off the street. So um, I tipped them down on their sides so they wouldn't, I guess, uh, catch as much wind and they wouldn't blow all over the place. Did those barricades appear to slow down the SUV as it drove through them? Objection. Speculation. Um, overruled, he may answer, given all of the cross. Uh, no, it did not slow the vehicle down at all. You discharged your firearm three times toward the vehicle? That is correct. Did all three rounds strike the vehicle? Yes, they did. Can we please put up for the jury? <laughs> They were waiting. Leslie, Sue, and Zach were waiting for this. Ooh, ooh, can you feel it? Can you feel it like I feel it? Three, exhibit number three, which has previously been published. Go ahead. We're gonna start at the two minute and 59 second mark if we can. And while we're working on that, can we please clear the screen now? Thank you. What, what exhibit is that? Three. three. <laughs> we're at the 2.58 Second mark uh, on this exhibit number three. Do you see a vehicle on the screen? <coughs> yes, I do. Does that appear to be the same color of vehicle you saw uh, drive through the intersection where you were posted? Yes. Let's play from this second, please. Pause. We paused at 302. Does that appear to be the same make and model? as the SUV you saw driving through the intersection. Objection. Overrule. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> I love when Judge Doro doesn't even wait to hear his argument because she knows it's going to be full of shit. Oh, my God. Is there a difference between this vehicle and the vehicle you saw at your intersection? The difference in the vehicle is that there's no damage on this one. Okay. Let's play again from this point. <clears throat> I almost feel like this was another opportunity for Zach to get the initial domestic argument that occurred on the record in front of the jury one more time. This this is a little bit extra and I see him and I love him for it. Pause. Pause at three minutes and 47 seconds. Did you see a person wearing a gray hooded sweatshirt in that clip? Yes, I did. Was the appearance of that person and their clothing consistent with the person you saw driving the SUV through your intersection? Objection, speculation, two different incidents. Overruled the witness may answer. <laughs> Can we please put up for everybody exhibit number 120, which has previously been received? You see the photograph on the screen in front of you? Yes, I do. Does that appear to be a vehicle consistent with the one you saw driving through your intersection? Yes. And the person seated in the driver's seat, does that look like the same person you saw driving that red SUV? Yes. We put up for everybody, please, exhibit number nine. You see the photograph on the screen in front of you? Yes. Does that appear to be the same vehicle that you saw driving through the intersection of uh, Wisconsin and Maine? Objection, hearsay. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. Does that appear to be the same driver of that same vehicle? Objection, hearsay. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. Can we please put up for everybody exhibit number 169, which has previously been published. Go ahead. <laughs> Objection, relevancy. Overruled. See the photograph on the screen in front of you? Yes. Does that appear to be the same vehicle that you saw drive through the intersection of Wisconsin and Maine? Yes. Does that appear to be the same driver? Yes. What's going on with that front passenger window? It looks Objection like Objection, leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. It looks like it's rolled down. So if someone had, before this incident, painted that window black, covered it in a black paper bag, <laughs> and taped it up. Zach is being so petty right now.
right now and Daryl Brooks deserves it because he pushed, he really pushed the window tint issue like that was a significant factor in determining who was driving this vehicle. He, he deserves every ounce of this and I'm so glad that Zach gave it to him. Duct tape and then rolled the window down. Would that have prevented you from seeing through the front passenger window? Objection, speculation. No. Overruled the witness, my answer. Who is the person depicted in exhibits number 120, number 9, and number 169? Daryl Brooks. Thank you. Objection. I do not consent to being called that name. The you objection is noted for the jury is advised to disregard as it's not testimony. It's a comment. All right. Thank you, sir. You may step down. Oh, oh, Officer Bryce Schlocked in, held his own the entire time against this cretin. Mm. He explained things in such a plain, clear, empathetic, um, societally impactive way throughout the entire course of his testimony, through his cross-examination, through his, re uh, not recross, but his um, redirect when Zach questioned him again. Officer Bryce Schlockton, Officer Gingerbeard, thank you. Thank you. He approached Daryl Brooks with a level of disdain and like, I am forced to talk to a worm that has somehow, somehow metamorphosed into a human being so completely. Huge respect to this officer for going through all of this and the fact that Daryl Brooks questioned him about his trauma in witnessing what carnage Daryl Brooks had caused, revolting. We'll just say that on the record. This is one of my favorite moments of this trial because this officer did not let Daryl Brooks have an inch. He was ready for everything and anything and you love to see it, of course, of course. If you like this video, then please consider liking and subscribing. I'm Maddie from Mules and Murder, and I will see you in the next one.